Hey, good good uh, day, everybody. It's hard. I don't, afternoon. I don't know where you are, but good day, everyone on the panel. Hey, I got some of the biggest hitters I've ever had at one time right here on this panel. Kenny Ray, uh, consultant at Marsh and McLennan Agency, uh, risk consultant. How you doing today, Kenny? All right, and Kara. How are you doing, Senior DOT Consultant at Ironwood Business Consulting? They can't hear me. I can hear you, Dave. Oh, you can hear me? Hey, Dave, we got I you can. now. Oh, I just bounced in. I think there was a little bit of a lag. All right. Uh, and also, um, David Heller, Senior Vice President of Government Affairs at TCA. All right. I got all three of you here. Big heavy hitters. Today's panel discussion is a lot about safety and and how we get it into the trucking industry to benefit us all going forward. I think it's all of our responsibility. I think everybody is it's our responsibility. But I think how do we do it more? And I and I'm going to start out first of all in this question and we'll kind of go and talk about it. Trucking sometimes gets a black eye by the insurance companies by the media, by whomever, how do we fix that right off the bat? How do we get that black eye right off of us? And I'll, I'll throw this to you, Kenny. Well, and <clears throat> Dave, you know I love this industry. I, I've been, this is my 35th year in truck safety, and I'm the son of a truck driver, and I got two little brothers that followed in my dad's footstep and, and are driving as we speak. They're both on the road today, and I'm passionate about this industry. But some of that black eye we brought on ourselves. Um, in, in the last few years, you know, motor carriers have been juggling between having enough drivers, putting people in seats to drive trucks, and sometimes lowering, uh, you know, their standards about who they hire. And uh, I think we have to keep doing what you're talking about, all of us plugging away. Uh, I know that you're aware because you and I, Kara, are here in Texas, but. Uh, our, our state legislature got involved this past session and passed significant tort reform. And that's going to be one of the things as other states move in their state legislatures, get their state courts to where some of these nuclear verdicts. And, and, and you know, I think we would all agree that if, if a trucking company does something wrong, they're grossly negligent and somebody gets hurt, those people ought to be compensated for that. But when you've got a minor crash with minor injuries and you know, a, a jury comes back with a multi-million, tens of millions of dollars of verdict and basically puts a trucking company out of business. It's all out of whack. And so one thing, I mean, you're asking the question, what do we do? One thing we do is we, we start trying to correct systematic problems uh, within the legislative bodies that can, that can work on meaningful tort reform. And then us in the industry, we've got to be serious about... Uh, you know, the people that we're hiring and putting in trucks, I think it's significant. And all of us on this call are, are familiar, but some of the listeners may not be of the, of the tremendous monumental report that came out this past week from the ATRI uh, about those risk factors that uh, predict the propensity of a driver having a future crash. And if y'all looked at those stats, and I'm not going to go over all of them, but the top four of those uh we're over 100%. Now, let that sink in just a minute. What that means is, is if a person has committed one of the top four indicators of having the propensity for a future crash, the chances of them having a future crash is greater than 100%. I saw That's that. That's almost a guarantee. It's a guarantee. They're going to have another wreck. So, 
you know, when, and y'all know I work for an insurance. I don't sell insurance. I'm a safety guy. But when underwriters look at things like that and they look, and these top four, I'll just tell you real quick, fail to yield right away. That's the top one. Uh, fail to use a uh, proper signal. That That's not an unsafe lane check. That's failing to use your turn signal when you change lanes. Uh, a recent crash, a past crash, uh, or a, a reckless driving violation. So an insurance underwriter, if you bring a candidate to them to insure and they've got one of those four things, statistics just tell that underwriter it's only a matter of time before this guy or this gal has another one because they've already done it in the past, and chances are over 100% that, that they're going to do it again. So one of two things happen. The insurance company either says that person's uninsurable, we won't cover them, or they make the premium so high that, you know, you just about can't afford your insurance payments. But it takes all of us collectively. I'm tickled dead you got Dave Heller on here working the legislative end with, with Truckload Care Association. you got Care on here that works for a consulting firm. And I represent the insurance industry, and all of us are co passionately committed to safety. And it takes multiple prongs of, of us committed to safety to, to get things changed, in my opinion. Uh, absolutely. And, and I, absolutely. And I, I agree with you 100%, Kenny Ray. Kara, talking to you, you walk into these carriers. How, how do you get them to understand not only the DOT regulations, but how important it is to their commitment to safety? Dave, I think the biggest thing is is education. I mean, I think it's teaching them where to even find these resources, where to where to know to look and see how they're rated. I, it's it's amazing to me the people that have trucking companies that have never heard of their CSA scores. They've never heard of the basics. <laughs> they have no idea what their score is. They're just winging it. And, and but, but Kara, and, and as you talk about that, truly, that's part of the problem, right? We don't know or. We're ignorant to the fact of where we're at. And, and we don't know, if we don't know where we are, how can we, and we think we're doing okay then, right? I mean, if I don't know that I'm 70% part of the problem, then I don't know that I'm doing anything wrong. Yeah, I just, and I think that's what I enjoy so much about my job, Dave, is that I can educate carriers. I, if, if a company will give me the time to come in and sit down with them, I can... I can probably almost guarantee that I can give them some suggestions and some tips in just a couple of hours to, to go through things with them on, on stuff they can improve on. And it's it's small things. It's things that, like, like, like you said, they just don't know. They don't understand where to even go and find those resources. I mean, I think shows like your show, I think different safety initiatives that, that they've got out there, I think it's just education. I think we just have to all continue to work and be more diligent on educating these smaller carriers and these smaller companies on resources that they have available so that most of them are free that they can look up and, and gain so much insight and so much knowledge if they'll just take the time to look for it so dave he, here we are I, and i and i'm, I'm going to throw it to you you're 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 the vice president of our trade uh, of our trade association okay. i mean seriously what do we do how do we I, and i know you you're in governmental affairs and we can go there but let's look inward first for a second before I ask you the outward question. Let's look inward. How do we educate ourselves on what we need to do to be better at what we do? I mean, honestly, as a trade association, we actually need to step up and figure this out, right? Well, sure. You know, and you can break trucking down into its basic, most root form there is, right? And that's delivering freight from point A to point B and doing so safely. I mean, that's trucking. You know, there is no other way to describe that. And if one of those things changes, more specifically the safety equation, you're not going to be delivering that freight. And, and it does not pay to get into an accident. It doesn't help anybody in the industry to actively uh, work around compliance. And, and in my point of view and in my line of work, I can never advocate non-compliance, if, if you will. You know, there's always the way to do things or the way that's prescribed to do things. Certainly we can talk about changing things, but knowing full well that safety is first and foremost part of that root equation of what drives trucking that is where we as an industry have to go and it's that basic acceptance and you can build from there by working with somebody like kenny or somebody like Kara or, or your state trucking associations and getting that message across again this industry is so vast it is monumentally huge the very number of motor carriers that are registered out there so in saying that you know the 
obviously adopting that basic mantra and incorporating safety into that mantra is always going to be step one. So let's look outward for a second. The legislature. It's obviously, Kenny Ray mentioned it a little bit about tort reform. Uh, we, we, we need, and, I, and I'm just going to ask straight out, we, we got some investment in uh, the, uh, you know, into the country, into the infrastructure. We got the infrastructure bill. We got some investment. But really, Dave, I'm going to ask you, how important is that that when we go to capital, we talk about not only business and procuring funds to get businesses running, but we do it, but, but we want to do it, we also want to procure them on safety education, on safety initiatives, on safety to the next generation. How important is that when we step in there and we talk with these legislatures? Oh, it's huge. It's, it is massively huge. And, and we often make the mistake of assuming our legislators know trucking. And they, we assume that they know how it basically works. And when we assume that, we're often wrong because they don't. Um, you know, let's let the people who know trucking talk trucking and let's let us teach that to our legislators. I can't tell you how many congressional offices I've been in where you just sit down and start talking trucking and you realize it is a trucking 101 conversation. This is not advanced trucking. This is 101 <laughs> stuff that you're like, OK, we're now teaching the ins and outs of, of actually how to deliver freight and what that looks like and what potential legislation or regulations can do to the industry. Now, I get it. There is regulations out there that will seek to get the bad apples out of the industry. And I think we all support support those regulations because we want to do things safer and we want to do things the right way. But at the same point, we have to be able to talk trucking and talk to the manner in which helps improve our industry and talk to those that are making the rules and regulations. I think that is step number one. Don't ever assume that your legislators know the industry that you work in, because oftentimes, more times than not, that's not the case. And you have to go in there that and talk, knock on their door and say, hey, let's talk trucking. Let's talk about what you're doing and, hey, how that affects my business and how that affects the economy. And and take it from there because you're the ones. Trucking is the expert on trucking. Nobody else is. And you're the ones that need to talk about it. I, and and, and I, I know how that can be difficult to talk to somebody about trucking in a conversation or a group that has no idea what you're talking about. I, I get that. And then, and then it is Education 101. Kenny, we, we, we're talking, how, and I know your passion for safety, and I'm, I'm not questioning the others on the panel, but I know yours, been working with you for a long time. How do you see in getting that passion through to, these, to everyone that, you, that we come into contact with, and, the, and especially the next generation? How do we get that to them so that we change the industry with safety and, and make it better? I think one of the things, and I like the fact that you asked Dave Heller both an internal question and then an outward-facing question. I don't think we do the outward-facing stuff enough, not just with legislature, but the general public. Uh, the three of us, your panelists, we were visiting before the show started, and uh, one thing I shared with them is that I often get asked, uh, not because I, I'm a dynamic speaker or I'm, I'm in demand, but local uh, civic organizations. I'm talking about things like the Lions Club, the Kiwanis, the JCs, the Boy Scouts, the, the FFA. I mean, you, you pick a local organization in your area. They're constantly looking for programs to come when they have one of their meetings. And uh, you'll run into people at church. You'll run into people at the store. You'll run into people that you just know in your neighborhood. And you find out they belong to one of those organizations. And I think we in trucking have got to do a better job. Kara talked about education. It's not just education of motor carriers and the drivers. We, we have a tremendous internal focus within our industry, and we don't do a very good job of focusing out. And so every time I get asked to go speak to one of those civic organizations, I'll wear a sport coat and a pair of slacks, and I've got this little button. Y'all have all seen them. It says, I love trucking. And uh, I'll go there and just do it. They know I'm a retired state trooper. They always say, well, you come talk about road safety. But at some point in that discussion, I'll always just kind of pause for effect. And I'll say, ladies and gentlemen, I, I want y'all to look around this room. And we may be at a restaurant. We may be at a country club, wherever they have their meetings regularly. And I'll ask them to, to physically, I'll say, y'all all play with me here, role play with me here. Physically look around. I want them to look at the ceiling, the floor, the walls, the tables, everything. And I'll tell them, with the exception of the human beings in this room, 100% of everything you can see with your eyes came here 
on the back of an American truck. American truck driver delivered it. And and the point is, we need to we need to uh, educate the public. Uh, we're starting to do more of that in the Texas Trucking Association. We, you know, if you drive through Texas, and again, three of us are, are Texans, and, and Dave spends good time in our state. Uh, you can't drive very far <laughs> until you see a, a plaintiff's attorney billboard no. that says, I sue trucks, or, you know, I got $94 million from a truck. And uh, in, in the Texas Trucking Association, we're talking about, and this is something the three big associations, and Dave represents one of them, but you take the ATA, uh, the Truckload Carriage Association, and NTTC, uh, you know, th- those represent our, our, our industry. And we need to do a better job of not just educating legislators, but the reason I go and speak to those groups is because those people sit on juries of civic trials and uh, or civil trials. And, and someday when some plaintiff attorney stands in front of them and it's not even a fatality wreck, it's a minor property damage wreck. And this plaintiff attorney asked for $50 million to make a statement you know, I want that man or woman sitting on that jury to think, you know, everything in this courthouse got delivered by a truck, and this guy's fixed to put a trucking company out of business. And I just think it's education and us making the public more aware of how important this industry that all of us on this call are passionate about, <laughs> how important it is to the American economy and the average family. You know, I, I agree with you, in, in, and I also agree with you, Kenny, because not only does that trucking company pay, but eventually – Every single person pays in those in those huge uh, you know awards. I mean, all of us eventually pay, whether it be insurance or the rates or the or when you go out and purchase something. So, Kara, as you've talked to these guys and you're talking to us and you're and as you go out and you speak to the motor carriers, what is the biggest shocking point when they sit there and you tell them about their safety and their DOT and you're giving them what is the one thing when they're eyes light up and that what is it that you see the most that you that you really want to get across about what we need to learn and what we need to know well i mean i think so so right off the bat typically it is their scores it's it's the fact that they most companies have no idea that there is a place to go and look up and see data about their company to the rest of the world um so so i'll typically start and i'll log in just you know, with their DOT number only. Like, this is what just the average person can see about you. Now give me your PIN number, and I can tell you what driver was driving the truck and, you know, and give you a lot of real personal information about them. And, and most people just don't know that's out there. And I don't know how – I've tried to, to kind of figure out how do we get that word across to everybody, right? I, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm a consultant. I mean, that's how I make my living is trying to educate people about trucking safety. But aside from that, you know, I, I go back to even like the new entrant audits. I don't know that the past several new entrant audits I've, I've, you know, assisted clients with and participated in, I don't know that they even talk to them about the basics and about how to log in and look and see their scores. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it would even make a difference, but part of me wonders, you know, should there be a, a course that somebody's got to take <laughs> online, right? Everything Zoom or... I mean, you know, should they have to pass a, a one-hour course and a test that tells, you know, at least they have some type of general baseline, high-level knowledge of, of what it means to have a trucking company? I think everybody wants to have a trucking company. I think the oil industry is coming back. Uh, I think we're starting to see more trucks on the road. And these people want to put trucks on the road, and they can't spell DOT if you give them the D and the T. They, they don't understand. I know. I, I'll tell you that there's a general frustration, especially when you're talking to fellow fellow trucking companies and other people, and and you start to discuss with them. And and I, you know, I'm passionate about safety, and you start going into it, and and really, when is that? When is it for real? And I'm not just talking about hey, drive safe. You know, hey, hey, I hey, be careful out there on the road. So, David Heller, let me ask you a quick question. And here's a here's a funny one for you as you talk. We, do we do we as a public I know that we all think we're great drivers there's not a four wheeler out there there's not a truck driver everybody thinks they're a great driver I mean I rarely have I heard somebody go oh yeah well I suck you know I, I mean I, I'm just not any good at it 
you really don't hear that. My question is, when do we really get good? Do we do we need to recertify? Do we need to retrain? Do we need to make sure in this industry? When are we going to step up to the plate, honestly, and tell ourselves there's never a chance to not stop learning in this industry, right? Well, and you're right, and we have to make sure we're learning the correct things, and, and that's first and foremost. I mean, learning's great, and I'm all for it, but learning the wrong things doesn't help either. Agreed. Yeah. Let, let's put it this way. My son turned 16 in January. And <laughs> he is now at that point where every parent's worst fear is coming true, where it's, we've actually given him a license to drive an automobile, which is frightening in and of itself. So in having conversations with my 16-year-old son, who's a teenager in every sense of the aspect, and he grunts and has one-word answers and all that, but when you start engaging with him and I say, Jake, in driver's education, what did you learn about driving around a, a large semi-truck or 18-wheeler? Nothing is his response. I go, you don't know anything about driving around large trucks. He goes, no, they did not teach that to us. And he is a student in the greater Washington, D.C. metropolitan area in a public school. And he doesn't learn how to operate driving around a large truck from his driver's education class, which is astounds me. So it becomes that question of what are we learning? And certainly relearning and continuous learning are always good things. And this industry has tremendous opportunity to do that. But Again, looking at how we can operate safely, we're sharing the road with those that we're on the interstates with and on the common roadways with, and they're not getting it from, from day one, and then we're expected to go down this road. So there certainly is opportunity within the industry. I know there's several organizations, TCA being one of them, that has several different types of learning platforms or learning tracks that will help A, the industry get better and take that opportunity to provide remedial training or focus on developing a safety culture so that it is it is bred within the organization that you work for, so that everything they teach, eat, sleep, and breathe in terms of trucking is safety related. And we have we have shining examples of it too. We've got fleet safety winners the year in and year out that operate at such a high level, focusing on the training needs of the professional driver so that guess what? That professional driver comes home the next day or comes home the next week or that night to their families. And that's what it's all about, is, is making sure that we can continuously deliver freight and do so safely. Kenny Wright, next generation, the people that, those organizations that you go out and you talk to, the Boy Scouts, the, the, the schools, these places that you go and you speak to about trucking. And I get when you talk to uh, everybody, how do, we, how do we encourage them, everyone, to understand that this industry loves them as much as if not more than, than they'll ever know. I mean, really, you look at the drivers out there on the road through COVID and you look at everybody out there doing what they had to do. They're out there doing everything that they can. When it, How do we convey how much we love them and then still understand that that four-wheeler out there is driving crazy? But how do we convey that, that kind of thinking in that process? And it, it's a multi-pronged approach, just like we've been talking about the other facets. It's education. It's, it's exposure to our industry. You know, we've got quite a few public schools now. I know it's happening in Texas, and, and uh, Dave Heller may be able to tell if it's happening other, across the, the country. But we have public schools now in Texas that are actually offering truck driving as an elective, just like you, you, you could take wood shop or metal work or welding, and now you can actually take truck driving. You know, the dilemma is still for an interstate carrier is we've still got the, even though there's a pilot program going on right now, the barrier is still, you know, you got to be 21 years of age. And most of the states, and our state's a classic example of it. You can get an intrastate uh, class A CDL in Texas at age 18. Now let that sink in. So you could have a, a young man or a young woman, 18 years old, uh, if they're insurable, uh, they could get in a truck in El Paso, Texas, and drive to Orange, Texas, on, and, and stay on I-10 the entire time. So basically drive from the New Mexico state line to the Louisiana state line, 850 miles, and still in the state, same state. And that's perfectly legal. You could take that same kid in Texarkana, Texas, and they can't drive one foot into Texarkana, Arkansas, which is one contiguous city. So, you know, we've got a barrier there. And, and, and Dave, I, I'm not dismissing how volatile and divisive a topic this is. There's just a bunch of people out there in the world that says 18-year-olds don't need to be driving big trucks. Well, 
I hate to let them know that it's happening every day within the states. They're just not allowed to cross state lines with it. Uh, right. But you know what? At some point, uh, we, we, we've got to let young people know that this is a viable career. You know, you think back to the way Waylon and Willie saw Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. Don't let them drive them old trucks. I mean, you know, we've got a stigma in our industry that it's it's somehow subpar, subclass as an industry. And, and I tell everybody, even though I'm a retired state trooper and my dad's already in heaven now, I am proud, proud to be the son of a truck driver. I never, ever back away. I'm proud to have two little brothers that are driving as we speak. So we've got to have pride in our industry. We've got to seize every opportunity we can. Go to career days, talk to your local school board. Hey, have y'all considered adding a truck driving elective to the class? And uh, it, it, it's just, it, and it's in its infancy right now of us trying to proactively do that. But we've got to keep the momentum going, particularly at the national level where that, you know, we've got a real movement of trying to draw young people into our industry. And, and I agree. And Kara, and I'm going to throw this at you real quick. I'm just going to, I want really quickly, how do we get, how do we get more women in the industry? Because I, I could ask these two guys, but I think you would probably have a little bit better answer. How do we get more women in the industry? I think we need them here. So oh, I think the women in trucking have an awesome, awesome thing going. I, I love to follow them. I, I follow them on the various social media accounts, and you know, I, I enjoy watching that. But I think to go back to what Kenny said, really, to not get too far in the weeds, there, there's been a shift in, like he said, in, in truck drivers in general. And there was a point in time where truck drivers took their position seriously. Um, and I, I think that they used to have a, a respect. It was really cool when you'd see a truck going down. They're like, I can remember being a little kid. And you would go down the road, especially if you're on interstate, you know, you'd, you'd get the trucker wave, right? Like, I mean, I, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know the last time I saw a kid doing that whenever you're going down the road. But it's because they have made this shift to, you know, almost, I, I think the... I think the outlaws of the, you know, the bull hauler days and all of those really just rogue, crazy, off the wall companies came about and, and people, people got scared of trucks and people got scared of truck drivers and people started seeing all these crashes. And, you know, honestly, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's a lack of, I don't, I don't, I think it's the, there's, they're missing a piece of, like Kenny said, it is a legitimate career. It's a it's a great career. Uh, there's there's money to be made. I mean, they're paying these truck drivers astronomical salaries now because they can't find truck drivers. And I think you go back to that education and those younger kids. And by the time a kid turns 21 years old, most of them kind of know what they want to be when they grow up. Some don't. I mean, some are still figuring it out at 41 years old. But most of them have already chosen a path, and they're dedicated on it. And so I think that we need to take that back into schools. And, I mean, I'm just going to say I, I think women can do anything men, you know, can do in a lot of cases. Maybe not all. Um, but, you know, I Amen. think we need to have more of a focus on on putting those women behind the wheels. I, I'm starting I to see more of it. Um, but it's just not enough. I agree 100%. All right, David, here's here. I'm going to give you the – the last question, and I and I and I and I think it's probably the most difficult. Um, oh, thanks, thanks for that. Yeah, <laughs> we've been we've been we've been talking about it, and 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 we've been talking about the black eye in the industry. How how do you and I and I'm going to throw this directly at you. How do you make a difference um, in safety in this industry? And, and, and what are you going to do going forward? I, I truly believe, I know, I know you've got the TCA quit answer and I know you've got, you got all that. I want, I want the David Heller answer. I want, I want the guy, I want to know about you and about safety and your commitment to it and what you're going to change because you have a big voice in Congress on the floor and, and I want to hear what it is. I want to hear what your commitment to that is. Oh, that, <laughs> yeah, you're right. You did give me the hard question, didn't you? Um, you know, and, and there is so much rolled into answering that question because we've been we've been doing this for a half hour now, and you can bring all of those answer, answers into this question. But you know, the bigger question is: is what am I doing to get into this? Is is I'm trying to entertain and get other people to do exactly what I do. 
I can't do this alone. This is not a Dave Heller initiative. This is a trucking initiative. And the industry is so, uh, so vast that we have to have more people talking about it and telling our story. Going down on Capitol Hill, going to the Boy Scouts, going to, to local municipalities and talking about the industry and what it means to be involved. This is a great industry and it does a ton of great things. And a, a funny thing happened on the way to a global pandemic, right, is, is we were in this industry. And as Kara had said, in, drivers got a black eye of sorts. And then all of a sudden people started needing masks and, and vaccines and toilet paper. And how does all that stuff get to a store? Well, guess what? It, it comes on the back or on a trailer of a, of a truck driver and they deliver that. And we know that simply because nobody goes to the train station to buy any of these goods. They go to a supermarket because it all comes on trucks. So it's recognizing that difference and telling that story. I've been on Fox News. I've been on CNN telling these stories as well. And it's that opportunity. Don't miss out on that opportunity to talk about how great your industry is and how much respect the professional truck driver plays and just on having everybody live their day to day lives. And that's the message we need to deliver. And, and it's and it has started to become more recognized. It has started to become more needed. You know, get, coming out of the pandemic, everybody has now determined that the professional truck driver has become an essential profession. It has become a required need for the American economy and the citizens who live in this country. So you start recognizing and see the paths that are going on. Kenny talked about younger drivers, ages 18 to 20. There's a pilot program going on as we speak at the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration that is looking to recruit people ages 18 to 20 to drive a truck so that they have the ability to discover and find a rewarding career just getting out of high school that may or may not have previously existed depending on a carrier's ability to find intrastate freight. The tide is turning on the image of the professional truck driver and we're all this great big part of it because we are all doing these great things like this webinar or like this podcast. And, and however, we're preaching to the choir here. Now it's turning around and preaching to it for those on the outside and saying, as Kenny said, there's not a thing they don't own that wasn't on a truck at some point in time. And I bet somebody a hundred dollars and say, I bet you can't find anything that was, you know, I, at that point, they'll be stumped and say, you're right. And then maybe you'll get some quick cash. But my point being <laughs> is literally the impact that the industry has on the global community that is our planet is tremendous. And, and it's up to us to get people to recognize that. Yeah, I appreciate it. Amen, brother. Yeah, I, I, and that's why you're up there preaching it on the hill. I, uh, yep. I, <laughs> look, I, I want to appreciate all y'all being on here today. You know, I don't, and, and by the way, David, you, I know you've been on CNN and Fox, but, but now you're on BCB Live, and it is the safest <laughs> station in the nation. And, and you know what? I'll tell you, we, we all have a commitment. I, I know you're passionate, each of you. That's why you're here. I know, and, and as here at BCB, we talk about safety. I think it is the most important thing that we do in this industry um, as we move forward. I, I know the service that we provide is A to B, and I, I get all that. But if we don't do it safely, it, it doesn't need to be done. And, and I, I mean, we don't need to move it if it can't be done safely, right, David? I mean, it just doesn't. And, it, and I, I think we have to, com that commitment has to be renewed, revigored, and I appreciate each and every one of y'all for being on here today to talk about that. Hey, thank y'all so much. Y'all have a great weekend. I appreciate y'all being on the panel today. Thank y'all so much.